What's up guys? It is Monday afternoon-ish. Um, normally I already put out a video by now, but um, we, just, we got in from TX2K last night, got home, my fuel kit's here, so I wanted to unbox that, show you guys. Um, it's still going to be a few weeks until everything's installed and tuned. Still don't have the turbo yet. Hopefully they get this, that gets shipped out this week. I don't know exactly what the holdup is. I'm going to have to ask Ed what's going on. Not that it really matters because we have autocross this weekend, autocross the weekend after that, and we have a couple weekends free, and then we have more autocross again. It's a busy season. But, uh, hey, I'll go up this box, show you guys the fuel kit, and uh, go over a few things with that. I don't know exactly what all is in there, but this damn dog, he doesn't, he doesn't stop. Drop it. Now let's talk a little bit about uh, TX2K after this too. Package, real, real nice. There we go. So that is the uh, the ethanol sensor. That's pretty sick. And you see the R in there. Well, another thing I really like about Precision Race Works is that uh, they go with blue for everything, and blue is my favorite color and the color of my car, so it's really nice. Drop it. Drop it. I'm not sure why this came with my kit. This is like the upgrade lines, I believe. So that's actually pretty cool. All right, well, we got all types of stuff here. Here is the fuel rail and a new fuel line there. We got the uh, 925cc injectors here. Very nice. Uh, I got the drill bit to drill out the intake manifold. I'm guessing this goes on to the end of the fuel rail. Um, pressure sensor, I believe, or flow sensor, something along that line. Um, here's that stuff. All the wiring for the injectors and for the ethanol sensor. It should plug right into the ECU. Very nice. And then this should be my fuel pump. Fuel pump filter. These are uh, all the things you need to get the fuel pump fitted into the uh, fuel pump basket. Ooh. And then a uh, Wabro 450 pump. Very nice. I'm excited. Very, very excited. I'm a little nervous to do all this, but very excited. Let's go over this again real quick. This is for um, modifying the basket, which I might actually order a new one to do. Would you quit it? Stop. Okay. We got the 925cc injectors here. Very nice. Fuel rail and fuel line, which I'm assuming this will thread into this, and then that other nipple, wherever that was over here, goes to the other side. I'm not even sure where this connector goes. I have to look online. They have all the PDFs online. This is for drilling out the uh, intake manifold where the new injectors will go. Because in Europe, the uh, the European cars already have port injection. Here we get screwed. We don't have it. So we have to drill out the spots where it would normally be and throw in these injectors. So there's that. Um, from what I understand, this is like a $100, $150 upgrade. Um, I don't know why this was included. I didn't pay for it. Um, I'm not going to argue it. I don't know where it goes. I have to look that up too. Very happy. Um, this fuel pump, this is what's going to be doing all the hard work for us. Um, I'm going to be doing separate videos, there'll be three separate videos, so it'll be doing the port injection kit as one, okay, hopefully that's like next weekend or something, and then the turbo as another, and then the fuel pump being modified and put in as another, so it'll be three videos out of this whole thing, um, well, there'll be a lot more, there'll be dynos, there'll be tuning, there'll be all, all types of stuff, but what I'm most excited about 
is this ethanol sensor. Um, the ECU will now be able to read exactly how much ethanol is in the car and adjust boost and timing um, based off of that to optimize power. Be very, very cool. Now, I, I kind of do want to get an ethanol gauge, but I do believe once the ECU can read the ethanol percentage, you can go in with OBD11 and read it off of there. So, I don't really want to spend the money for a gauge. I don't want another gauge up there. But, uh, I guess we'll see how it pans out. This, this is the tits. Well, like I said, it's going to be a few weeks until everything is getting installed and tuned and this and that. But where I'm going to go uh, update all my United Motorsports tuning stuff is like three and a half hours away. And UM doesn't do stuff on the weekends, so I'm going to have to take a Friday off here, um, like two or three weeks from now, to go up there and get stuff done. Uh, see, what I kind of want to do is do the fuel stuff first, um, go up there, get retuned, get on the dyno, see what it makes um, like before and after, or at least after the fuel kit, at least, and then put the turbo on, like come back a couple weeks later, put the turbo on, and see what the difference in power is. But to me, that's kind of dumb, because I'll be paying like double labor and whatnot, so, and that's two days of work I have to take off. So I have to take off on a Friday, leave here on a Thursday night, go up there, stay the night so I can get the, be at the tuner like first thing in the morning to do logs and stuff to send back and forth with Fred at United Motorsports, get everything dialed in right. But uh, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Just bear with me. It'll be a lot of videos, a lot of content. Um, I would just feel free to comment down below with any questions or anything. Um, I'm hoping to make like 450, 460 on pump and it should be pretty damn close to 500 on ethanol. Um, there, there's a lot of guys out there already running this turbo, making 450, 460 easily on pump without port injection, just high pressure, low pressure fuel pump. So uh, I think with the port injection and uh, the ethanol sensor and Jeff's tuning god ability, we'll be able to be pretty close to 500 on, uh, on ethanol. I don't know. How much ethanol I'm going to be able to run with the 450? It sh I should be able to at least run an E40, the E60 mix. I wouldn't really want to run anything more than that anyway. Um, just to keep the fuel system clean. Not every I don't think everything in the fuel system is ethanol ready. Um, so I don't want to run a full mix, at least for a long period of time. Um, it can cause problems, this and that, gumming up injectors, whatever, whatever. If the lines aren't proper and whatnot. But Lisa, if I can run up to like an E50, E60 blend, I'll be, I'll be way happy with that. Um, but yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait. It's a little bit more about 2K here. I'm sure you guys have been watching the videos. Um, if you can go, you need to go. I didn't even gather like half, not even half of the shit on video. It is a stupid, wild, crazy event. Um, remember like the first Fast and the Furious with all the cars rolling out and this and that? It's literally just like that, except for it's mostly Corvettes and Mustangs. Uh, you don't really see too many imports on the streets. Most of them are at the track, and at the track, it's mostly R35 GTRs. But regardless of that, it's freaking awesome. And uh, most of the stuff happens on there, Royal Purple Raceway, or they call it Houston Raceway now, or something, whatever. But uh, that Saturday night, we went to uh, Houston Motorsports Park, which is another track there in Houston, to the No Prop event. That event you can't miss. If you're going out to 2K, you need to go to this event because it's freaking crazy. You've seen all the people and the betting and, and all that. And if you haven't, go check out my TX2K Day 3 video. But I want to give a huge, huge shout out to Pro Speed. Um, they gave us both media passes. Like, I don't really know them, like, at all. Um, I just went up there and I was like, hey, you know, you guys got any passes we can maybe get? And they were just like, yeah, they go up to the front, put us on a golf cart. Drove us up there, grabbed his passes, brought us back. So I didn't even have to get off like the track at all. I could just pretty much stand wherever I wanted to record. And you know, with this pass, if you walk up to any of the racers, you know, at their spot, they're gonna like want to talk. You know, this and I didn't do any of that really, um, but I could have if I wanted to. Um, but yeah, huge shout out to them. Like that was really awesome. Really made my day. And you know, they gave her a pass too, so it was like double awesome. Um, it's a hell of an event, a hell of a time. Uh, they got a lot of love for Houston. 
Uh, even though I did get a ticket, I don't know what I'm going to do about that. I might take a little driver course online or something to not get points or something. I don't even know how it works. We'll see when my uh, when my fine comes in the mail, I guess. Hopefully it's not too terrible. But, uh, yeah. If you can go, definitely go. Uh, be on the lookout for these videos coming within the next month or so. Hopefully we can make some good power after that. I need to start working on braking again. Um, hopefully go with the TTS caliper upgrade, go with some two-piece rotors, uh, braided steel lines, you know, high temp fluid, the whole nine. But uh, we'll see. It's going to be a big season. We got autocross this weekend, then we're back in Amarillo for the SCCA series the weekend after. Hopefully the track maps out like tonight so I can study that. Hopefully we can snag another top three spot. I got first last time, so I don't know. We'll see. I'm stop jabbering. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully the uh, other Eurocode brace comes in this week so I have like some actual real content for you on Thursday. But uh, we'll see. But thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the flip-flop.